that knows the truth, that knows that there's a God, but chooses to sin against him anyway. There's wrath coming for any person or any nation who is that way. And it says in verse 19, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. Remember Abigail was sharing with us about the brain? And the human brain is such a miracle that it could not possibly come about by chance or by evolution. If you study the human brain, you will know. Not you will think or you will hope or you will believe, but you will know that there is a God. Do you see how it says? That which may be known of God is manifest in them. In their brains, right? For God has showed it unto them. You know God has already proven that he exists to us. He's already proven it. Well, I don't see him. I believe that someone built this guitar, even though I've never met him. Because this guitar can't make itself. I believe someone built this building. I believe someone built this sound system. I believe someone built this piano. I believe someone built the suit that I'm wearing, the shoes that I'm wearing. The phone. Do you need help? Let me see. Well, I might be able to figure out why. Go live. Landscape not supported. Well, you can do it in straight, or you could. Is it signed into mine? on something else and do it straight. I'm just, I'm just letting you know. You could put it on a, on that. This can clamp on here. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. I'm just giving you a suggestion. You can, you can turn it um, straight up and down if you clamp it onto the back of the chair. So just so you know. All right. <clears throat> Romans chapter one verse eighteen. Yes. So. I know that there's a God. You know that there's a God because we can see what he created. And what he created cannot come about by accident. It can't come about by chance. And, you know, you might be like, well, I, I, I heard in school or I was watching PBS or, or and I, I heard a scientist say this is how it all evolved. A scientist can't show you something evolving. A scientist can only tell you that we dug up a fossil and we think that that fossil is an old version of something today. But that's not showing you. That's not proving it to you. That's just showing you something that they dug up. Listen, a scientist can't prove any of that because it is impossible that things can happen by accident. Something as simple as a chair. That chair cannot come about by accident. Somebody built it. Everything that you see, someone built. And so the Bible says that God showed it unto them. God actually proved to us that he existed through nature. Verse 20 says this, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. So in this verse here, it says, they glorified when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful. So I want to show you, the Bible says, every human being that's born in this world, they look at nature, they look at creation, and they know it was designed and created by someone. Because creation and nature and, and, and DNA and molecules and everything that we have to live and the air that we breathe and the structure of cells and all of that, it is designed. Every single thing we see around us it is evidence of design. And so the Bible says that we know God, but we don't glorify him as God. Why? We want to do what we want to do. We know that if we glorify God as God, we might have to change what we're doing, how we're living. And it says, neither were thankful. So the answer to the question, why America has changed, is that along the way, we stopped being thankful. We knew there was a God, but we didn't glorify him as God. 
by people in America, and I'm sure in other countries this way too, and then we stopped being thankful. The root of sin is unthankfulness. That's the root of sin. It's why we sin is because we're not thankful. In this passage of scripture, Paul describes a change that takes place in society. He was describing the society he lived in, but the description also fits our society today. In fact, this passage sounds like it's describing America. Listen to the rest of this. He was writing a letter to the Romans, but the Roman Empire at that time was a very wealthy, very technologically advanced empire. Very powerful, very wealthy, and very educated. And they were very similar to America today. They were a very similar type of empire. And the Apostle Paul's writing a letter to the Romans, and he's describing what is happening in Rome to the Romans. And you watch the Apostle Paul describing the Roman Empire, and you sa it sounds like he's describing America, because sin is the same, the pattern is always the same. Listening to what it says here, in verse uh, 22. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, to beasts, four-footed beasts, I'm, I'm sorry, to birds to four, and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Now, in America today, we don't necessarily have idols that we bow down and worship, no. But we do worship the things of this world. The Bible says covetousness, which is idolatry. Loving money is actually idolatry, the Bible says. And so you see how in our culture today, we want more things, right? We desire the things of this world. We care more about the things of this world than we do about God and his kingdom, as is evidenced by the large numbers of people that go to many events but don't come here. We can see that. We care more about the things of this world. So we have, in America, begun to worship idols instead of God. But where did that start? It started with being unthankful. Because if you're not thankful to God, then you don't care about him, and then you start looking for other things. And it says this, Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Does that happen in America today? It says, and likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Did you know that when you sin, it's not convenient? <laughs> now, I know the word convenient. We have kind of a different way we use it today. But basically, something that's convenient is something that, that benefits you, that's, that's easy, that makes things life go smooth and well. And when we sin... And when God gives us over to wickedness and to a reprobate mind, which basically means a mind that doesn't listen to God or pay attention to the Bible and God, what actually happens is life becomes very inconvenient because we have all these consequences from our sin. And it says this, um, being filled with all unrighteousness, and I'll listen to this list. Does this sound like America? Fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who know the judgment of who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same but have pleasure in them that do them. Does that sound like, it sounds like the Apostle Paul was living in America in 2023, what he just described here. Okay, now here's an amazing thing though. The Romans, well they were Romans. They worshiped false gods. They weren't Christian. So we expect it from the Romans, but who were the people who started this country? They were Christians. They weren't Romans. They didn't bring idols over from England. They came here to worship God and read their Bible and obey it and follow it. As recently as 1963, 
Public schools would say the Lord's Prayer over the sound system and read the read a passage from the Bible before they started school. The yeah. public school did that. Mm -hmm. So it's different, isn't it? It's not like the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire, they never were godly. They never were Christian. They actually eventually became Christian, by the way. The Roman Empire actually did. But that was about 300 years after this. But listen... How did America go from being Christian like that to the way it is today? And now it sounds like he's describing Rome, but he's describing a country that started out Christian. And the answer is, they stopped being thankful. That's how America became what it is today. Is this right in the passage? It says, neither were thankful. They stopped being thankful. The root of sin is unthankfulness. God commands us to be thankful. I'm just read you some quick verses. Ephesians 5.20 Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Colossians 3.17 And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. I want you to think about this. Have you ever done something for someone who wasn't thankful? Did you feel like doing more for them? If you did something for them and they weren't thankful? No, you don't feel like doing more. Did you do less for them after that? After they weren't thankful for what you already did? Yes. You know, God has done so much for us. He's given us life and provided for our needs. He sent his son to die for us so we could be forgiven and spend eternity with him in heaven. He gave us the Holy Spirit in our hearts and the Bible to guide us every day. It's a terrible sin to be unthankful. America began its downward slide when it stopped being thankful. And I want to show you some things in this passage. You see how it says in verse 21... They glorified him not as God, neither were thankful. You see that? And now look at verse 23. It says, and changed. And then it says, wherefore, in verse 24, wherefore God also gave them up. And then look at verse 25. It says, who changed. And look at verse 26. For this cause God gave them up. And then look at verse 26. It says, Even their woman did change the natural use. And then it says in verse 28, God gave them over. Do you see how it says they weren't thankful and then they changed something? And then God gave them over. And then they changed something. And then God gave them over. So the answer to the question is, why has America changed? Three times it says, and they changed something into something else. And they changed. The reason that they changed is because they weren't thankful. And the Bible says God gave them over. See, here's what we do a lot of times. We go, God... Why is our country in so much trouble? Why are our churches in so much trouble? Why are our families in so much trouble? God, will you fix it? And I think it's good to pray that people will be saved and pray that God will fix things. But you know, it's interesting. The Bible says they weren't thankful, they changed, God gave them up. They weren't thankful, they changed, God gave them up. God gave them over. And we're going, why is everything so messed up in our country? Why is our, our world getting so wicked today. Why are all these problems here? And the Bible says that God actually just says, okay, if you're not going to be thankful and you're going to change everything, I'm going to give you up. I'm going to allow you to do whatever you want. Did you know that the worst thing that can happen to us is for God to let us have what we want? 
You see, we look at America today, even non-Christians in America look at our country today and say, you know, you, I don't know if you've ever seen those polls. They do polls. You know, what do you think about the president? What do you think about the economy? What do you think about this? And they ask people in the polls, what do you think about our country? Is it heading in a good direction? Is it bad, in a bad direction? And now it's like something like 60, 70 percent of Americans, any political party, they agree that our country is heading in a bad direction. The majority of people in America are like, our country is headed in a bad direction. So here's the interesting thing. In the last 40 years, remember the message I preached last year? Do what thou wilt is the whole of the law, right? The 60s, it was, if it feels good, do it. Remember, Aleister Crowley, his religion was called Thelema, and all of the rock and roll of the 60s was, they all followed and worshipped and followed Aleister Crowley, and they put all his teachings in their music. And if you remember, uh, he said, the removal of all limitations is the goal of Thelema, his religion. And what do people say today? Don't tell me what to do. Don't try to tell me what to do with my body. Don't tell me what to do. Keep your religion to yourself. Don't try to stop me from doing anything. Allow me to do whatever I want. You know, God isn't like us. We say, well, we're going to make a law, and we're going to stop you from doing what you want. God says, okay, do it. It's interesting, isn't it? God actually gives us what we want. But listen, when we get what we want, it's the worst thing that could have ever happened to us. America decided to do an experiment. In the 60s, they said, let's throw out all the morality, and not everyone, but you understand, a lot of people did this, and over time, it caught on until today, a majority of people in America do this. Let's get rid of all morality, all rules, all religion, all restriction, and let's say, if it feels good, do it. Do it, thou wilt as a whole lot. Let's try it. Let's experiment. 40 years later, the majority of people in America agree that that experiment failed. Well, do they actually believe the experiment failed? Well, they don't even know it was an experiment. They've forgotten. Listen, this is how most Americans are. Most Americans go, wasn't the 60s great? Woodstock, peace man. Uh, that stupid Vietnam War, we protested, you know, we, that was awesome, you know. Oh, the liberation, the feminist movement, women's liberation making divorce and remarriage easy, the drugs, the alcohol, it was awesome, party, the 80s, I'm on a highway to hell, right? I mean, this is great, this is wonderful. The, the, the 90s, Marilyn Manson. <laughs> um, I don't know, Cardi B, and I won't say any more after I say that. Some of you know what I'm talking about. And those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, Believe me, you're better off. Listen, we look at the sexual revolution, the drugs revolution, getting rid of you know, Roe v. Wade and abortion on demand. We look at all that and we go, that was good. But our country is heading in a bad direction. That's what we do, don't we? That's, I'm talking about the culture. We don't connect the dots. Let me ask you something. If the 60s was so wonderful, why is our country on the wrong track now? It's funny how everybody agrees our country's on the wrong track, but they don't agree that it's because of what happened in the 60s, or the 70s, or the 80s, or the 90s. Isn't it interesting? We don't like what we got, but we still want to keep it. We don't like where we are, but we want to keep going down the same road interesting the worst thing that can happen to us is for God to let us have what we want the worst thing that can happen to a country is for God to remove his hand of restraint to say the removal of all restriction is the goal of the Lima we think well that's wonderful I can do whatever I want that's the worst thing that can happen America has changed because it has forgotten to be thankful in this passage, there are three lessons we can learn from the downward spiral of America. So we need to draw a lesson for ourselves, don't we? We need to learn something for ourselves. We can't go out there and preach to everybody else and tell them what they're doing wrong. No, everybody 
in the culture, just like in Roman culture, Paul didn't go around the streets telling all the people, shaking his fist. I don't know if you remember this. I've shared this before, but did you know that same-sex marriage was popular in the Roman Empire? Nero was the emperor um, when the Apostle Paul wrote Romans. Nero murdered his mother. He had some different wives, but then he also married a man twice, two different men. He married one man, and he dressed up the man in, in men's clothes, and he dressed up as the bride. Another time, he decided he wanted to marry another man, but he decided he wanted to be the groom. So he dressed up the man as a bride, and he dressed up as the groom. Well, that sounds familiar. Yeah. They literally had same-sex marriage. Not, it wasn't necessarily legal, but it was, it was something that they did. Homosexuality, abortion. They even believed in evolution. The Epicureans were Greek philosophers who taught that everything in the universe was made up of atoms and that there was an explosion millions of years ago and then there was a gradual evolution until you got to everything you have today. That was not invented by Charles Darwin. Do you know why they don't teach you that in school? That the Epicureans believed in evolution hundreds of years before Christ? Because they want you to believe that evolution is a new enlightened idea that was recently discovered by scientists. And so they don't teach you that it was actually discovered hundreds of years B.C. They don't teach you that. So anyway, all I'm trying to say is everything that happened back then, um, all those things, the Apostle Paul did not go around preaching at the Romans and telling them that they were all needed to change and they needed to start living right. You know what he did? He preached the gospel to the Romans. He taught them they needed to be saved. Listen, our job is not to get mad on Thanksgiving about all the people in America that are unthankful and that are in rebellion against God. No, our job is to pray for them and to reach them with the gospel. That's what we do as a congregation, is that we share the gospel. But you know what our job is to do? To look at our culture and look at Romans chapter 1 and say, what's the lesson for me? See, rather than being angry at the world, they don't know any better. The Romans didn't know any better. They didn't know about God. They needed salvation. The people in our culture today, the people in Minneapolis and San Francisco, the, yes, even the people protest, uh, supporting Hamas, even those people, listen, they don't know any better. They're just doing what seems good to them. If it feels good, do it. That's what they've been taught their whole life. They need to be saved. They need love. They need the gospel. Jesus died for those people. But you know what we're supposed to do? We're supposed to learn a lesson for ourselves in this passage. So there are three lessons in this passage. And here's the first one. First one is this. Be thankful for what you have. That's the first lesson. It says in verse 24, Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts. Now, do you know what lust is? Lust is a desire for something that you don't have. Did you know that? That's what lust is. It's a desire for something you don't have. Now, you could say, I don't have a Culver's Butter Burger, but I want one. And you could lust for a Culver's Butter Burger. And then you could go to Culver's and you could get a Butter Burger and they're good. I like them. And you could lust for it and eat it and that wouldn't be a sin, would it? It would be totally fine. Because you don't have it, but you got the money, so you go and you get it. Oh, but what if you didn't have the money for a Culver's Butter Burger and you were lusting, so you went and stole to get it? Would that be wrong? Yeah, that would be wrong. So listen, in this passage, it's lust is a desire for something that you don't have. They were desiring something that God didn't, that wasn't theirs, that God didn't want them. And it says, to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts. Lust is a desire for what you don't have. It says, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Now, we know that that's not referring to homosexuality and lesbianism. That's mentioned later. So this is referring to to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. This is referring to fornication. It's referring to uh, a, a physical relationship with someone that you're not married to. And here's why that is, God, the Bible says God gave them over to the uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts. Because God says, a man shall leave his father and mother, shall be joined to his wife, and they shall be one flesh. So what happens? You leave your father and mother, 
you're joined to your wife, which means you make a commitment till death do us part to be with someone. And then you become one flesh. One flesh in the Bible refers to phys being physically one with someone. And so listen, until you've made the commitment, that person doesn't belong to you. So you're actually lusting after someone that you don't have. Be thankful for what you have, not what you don't have. Now, you can get a wife, you can get a husband, right? You can make a choice to commit to a person for life and say, till death do us part, I'm going to be your husband, I'm gonna be your wife till death do us part. Once you've committed to someone for life, now you have them, they belong to you. Now you can be one flesh and you're not desiring something you don't have. But you know why we commit fornication? Because we're not thankful. We're not thankful what we have. We want something that we don't have, so we say, I'm going to take it before it belongs to me. And in our culture today, get a boyfriend, sleep with them, break up, get another boyfriend, sleep with them, break up, get a girlfriend, sleep with them, break up, get another one, sleep with them. We want something we don't have. It doesn't belong to us. We're taking something that we don't belong to us. Remember what it says in the Song of Solomon? I am my beloved's, and my beloved is mine. Because they're married in Song of Solomon, just in case you didn't know that. It's the bride and the groom talking. Song of Solomon is a song about a married couple. That's what it's about. So, number one, how do we learn from what happened to Rome, what's happening in America? Number one, be thankful for what you have. Wait until you meet the person God wants you to marry. Marry that person and stay faithful to them for the rest of your life. You say this in your wedding vows, to have and to hold from this day forward. You say that, to have. See, before you stand at the altar, before you commit that person, you don't have them. And when we're not thankful, we lust for something that we don't have. So be thankful for what you have. Now, once you have that person, once you've made that commitment, now you can have them, to have and to hold from this very day forward. Now it's part of God's design. A physical relationship outside of marriage is fornication. If you're saved, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. I want to ask you to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. You can keep your finger in Romans 1. We'll be coming back, but turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. First Corinthians chapter 6, verses 15 through 20. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of an harlot? God forbid. So a harlot, of course, is a prostitute. If you're a Christian, you don't go join yourself to a prostitute. Why? Because you are not married to that person. Because your body is a temple. The Holy Spirit lives inside of you. So you don't want to dishonor your bodies. It says that to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Well, what that means is when you got saved, the Holy Spirit came to live inside you. So because the Holy Spirit lives inside your spirit, you're one spirit with God. So you can't be one flesh with someone that is doesn't belong to you if you are one spirit with God. Flee fornication. But he, every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So, in that passage it teaches that you belong to God. And yes, if you enter into a marriage relationship or a lifelong commitment with someone, then you belong to them. They belong to you. But um, we are not to lust after what we desire something that we don't have. So number one in Romans, go ahead and keep your uh, finger in 1 Corinthians 6. We're going to go back there. But now we're going back to Romans 1. So point number one, be thankful for what you have. How do we avoid going from what happened in the beginning of from the beginning of 
our country to what we have today? Well, it was because we weren't thankful. But there's a process, and God wants us to learn for ourselves. You know, when you look at those, the story that I told of Thanksgiving, okay, we don't have, we're, we're all thankful. We don't have 90 people showing up at our house for Thanksgiving, you know, okay? Although getting five more deer wouldn't be a bad thing, right? <laughs> but listen, so, but it's pretty much what we saw in that story, pretty much what we believe today. They were thankful, and they had a party, and they thanked God. And that's what Thanksgiving is. We can relate to that, can't we? We can relate to what happened to them. Now, I, I, we didn't dress like them, and we drive to our relative's house in a car, right? <laughs> our lives are different today. They didn't have cell phones in their pockets, so they could know ahead of time. Chief um, Samoset tweeted on Facebook, no, tweeted on Facebook, he posted on Facebook a selfie with his 90 Braves saying, hashtag first Thanksgiving. <laughs> oh, he's coming, quick. No, they didn't have what we have, but were they having a party and were they thanking God? And were they Christians like us? Yes, the, 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 the pilgrims were. So we can relate to that. Listen, today, you can look at your life and you can say, we're going to have a Thanksgiving party this week. And maybe we're going to go to a relative's house. And we're going to have turkey. Some people have ham, whatever. Um, and we're going to have a Thanksgiving. And we're going to thank God. And we're Christians. And we went to church. And we shared all the things we're thankful for. Hey, I want, I, want, I want to tell you something. Are there people that have sat in this room and raised their hands and shared things they're thankful for that are no longer here today? And they're not in another church. They're not in any church. And they're not even thankful to God anymore. And are there people who sat in this room, raised their hand, shared things they're thankful for, listen, and today they're not in church, and they are actually living a sinful lifestyle? How did that happen? They stopped being thankful. So don't just go, well, I'm sitting here today, and I'm good. I'm a good person. And I don't know why those people did that, but I'm not going to do that. No, there's a reason why they did it. They stopped being thankful. And that's why they're not here anymore. I'm not talking about people that are in another church, right? I'm talking about people who aren't in church at all. And they're living a sinful life. And why? It's because they stopped being thankful. I guarantee you, any one of them, you would talk to them, you would discover they stopped being thankful. That's why it happened. So listen, we could say, I love Thanksgiving. You know, it's so important to be thankful. We got to remember to be thankful. But you know what we're going to forget? We'll forget that being thankful is not just this thing. Well, it's good to be thankful once in a while. No, not being thankful is the reason why people wander for the Lord. It's the reason why an entire nation ends up like our country. It's because people stop being thankful. So the lessons that we learned for ourselves, I'm not wagging a, a, a finger at the culture, you understand. I'm not mad at LGBT people. I'm not upset at the people who are protesting for Hamas. I'm not angry at them. They need salvation. We're not here to wag a finger at them, preach at them, talk about them, tell them to their face that they're wicked and bad. No, we want to give them the gospel. We want them to get saved. We want to love them. No, today we are looking at what happened to Rome, what happened to America, and we're making it personal. We're applying it to our lives, and we're saying we need to learn the lesson of how that happened so we can avoid it happening to us. And number one is this, be thankful for what you have. Here's number two. Number two is be thankful for who you are. See, number one was be thankful for what you have, right? Whatever it is that you have. And remember... If you are not married to someone, you don't have them. So don't desire something you don't have. Be thankful for what you have. That's number one. Number two is be thankful for who you are. You see, it's different to, to be thankful for who you are than to be thankful for what you have. What you have is, well, I'm glad I, I like my guitar. I'm thankful for my guitar. I'm thankful I have clothes to wear. I'm thankful I have a car to drive. I'm thankful I just finished the gutters on my house. <laughs> Those are all things that I have. And it's good. Be, I'm thankful for this church, right? I'm thankful for the Bible. These are all things that I have. But listen, you also need to be thankful for who you are. And that is in verse 26. It says this, For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another. Listen, did you know that sin 
never attracts you with something bad first. It starts with something that isn't as bad or doesn't look so bad. And did you know that in the 60s, when they said, if it feels good, do it, they weren't promoting LGBT. I know there were Harvey Milk in San Francisco, and there were a few people in the 60s. My mom remembers the 60s and 70s, and she's told me stories about it, and she said this. She said, back in the 70s, there were a few gay, bisexual people in the Cultural Revolution, but she said most people thought that was weird, but they just kind of tolerated it. It wasn't, she said in the 60s, it wasn't like that. When they said, make love, not war, that's what they said in the 60s, and they practiced it at places like Woodstock. They were, what they were not saying men with men, women with women. They weren't saying that. That wasn't what they meant by make love without war, not war. They had, they had trading partners, wife swap, swapping, swinging. I personally know people who did that. <laughs> It's crazy, but I know people who they're like, oh yeah, back in the 70s, we would just trade back and forth. Yeah, I mean, I went to a church, and there were several families in the church, and they had traded back and forth with each other. But praise the Lord, they got saved, and they stopped, okay? <laughs> that was kind of odd for me. They're like, oh yeah, we all did that. You know. But listen, listen, it was men with women. That's what they were promoting. It was uncleanness to the loss of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies. It was fornication. It wasn't that. That came later. But listen, when you stop being thankful for what you have and you start desiring things you don't have, do you know what happens once you get all those things you didn't have that you desired for and you got? You get bored with that. And now you start to think, I'm not even happy with who I am. That's actually what happens. Because you get bored. It, it never ends. Listen, being unthankful is a disease that gets worse and worse. It gets to stages like cancer, stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four. It's like cancer. It gets worse. It doesn't stop. Being unthankful is a disease. And so listen, America wasn't content. And listen, I want you to know something. If you're not thankful for what you have, at some point you are going to stop being thankful for who you are you are going to start being unhappy with being a natural, normal human being. And that's what happened here. It says they changed the natural use into that which is against nature. Now listen to this. If you are a woman, be thankful that God made you a woman. Because if you're not thankful, there can come a point where you don't want to be one anymore. And nowadays, there are options that people didn't used to have. Listen, if you're not thankful that God made you a man, at some point you're not going to want to be one anymore. It says they change the natural use of that which is against nature. Listen, number one, be thankful what you have. Number two, be thankful for who you are. In Matthew 19, 4, that I quoted you before, Jesus said this, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? Jesus said that God made people male and female. And you have to be thankful to be male if you're male. You have to be thankful to be female if you are a female. Be thankful for who you are. Now I want to ask you to turn back to uh, 1 Corinthians 6, where we just were. And we're going to read verses 6 through 11, which is a little bit before that. Now, Paul is writing to the Corinthians. The city of Corinth was not Rome, but the city of Corinth was very wicked. In fact, the city of Corinth was so immoral that in that culture, do you know what they said if someone became very immoral, very wicked, living a sinful, immoral life? They said, oh, he got Corinthianized. Or they said, oh, he went to Corinth and they Corinthianized him. That's what they said. You know, that's actually what happened to a lot of those people in the 60s and 70s. In the 80s and 90s, they were Corinthianized. That's what happened to them. So Paul is writing to Corinth, and listen to what he says. Verse 9, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. 
nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Look at verse 11. And such were some of you. Did you know there were gays and lesbians in Corinth that were saved? And how were they able to change? I thought you were born that way. Well, we're all born that way. We're all born sinners. <laughs> what if I told you I was born a murderer? I can't help it. I get mad and I murder people. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're born with a desire to do something wrong. You still don't do it, even if you have the desire. Well, you know, here's what they say. I know a little on a tangent, not totally because it's in the passage, but they say this all the time. They say, well, if you have a desire to do something wrong and you repress it, you'll turn into a twisted, messed up, repressed individual. So what if I told my neighbor, well, I have a desire to murder you. I have a desire to steal your car. If I don't carry it out, I'm going to become a repressed, twisted, messed up individual. So the only way I can express what's in here is, I'm sorry, I have to kill you. Sorry, I have to steal your car. Well, it doesn't work like that, does it? The police come and they say, we're going to put you in a place where you will no longer be able to live out your desires. That's how it works. Everybody has desires that they can't fulfill. Saying no to your physical desires is just a part of life. That's just normal. He said, "What such were some of you, you're washed, you're sanctified, you're justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Listen, when you become thankful for who you are and you say, I am thankful that I'm a man, now you're able to live as a man the way God wants you to live. When you say, I am thankful as a woman to be a woman, now you are able to live as a woman the way God wants you to live because you become thankful. It's because, it's because we are not thankful for who we are that we think we cannot control our actions. When you are saved, you become a new person. He said, you're washed, you're sanctified, you're justified. Learn to be thankful for who you are. Now listen, I'm not saying that if you're not thankful, every single person here who's not thankful is going to become a gay or lesbian or transgender. I'm not saying that. I am saying that is the cause of it, but I'm not saying that that happens to everyone. But listen to this. Here's what I want you to know. There are other ways that we reject who we are. There are other ways. Don't wish that you were a different gender. That's what I'm talking about here, right? Because the men change the natural use, and the, which is against nature. The woman, the natural use, which is against nature. That's what's mentioned. But it's bigger than that, isn't it? Don't wish, listen, don't wish you were a different gender. Don't wish you were a different skin color. Don't wish you were a different hair color. Don't wish you were better looking. Don't wish you were taller. Don't wish you were shorter. Don't wish you were smarter. Don't wish you were more talented. Don't wish you were more popular. Don't wish you were rich. Don't wish you were famous. Those are all being, not being thankful for who you are. Think of it. Every one of those things, if you think, well, I'm ugly, and I'm mad that I'm ugly. I want to be handsome like that person or beautiful like that person. Listen, you're going to have all kinds of problems in life because you don't accept you the way you are, and you're not ugly anyway. That's just a lie from the devil. But what I'm saying is, that will mess up your whole life if you are not thankful for who you are. Well, I wish I was taller. I wish I was shorter. Not many guys wish they were shorter, unless they were like Robert Wadlow, maybe. Listen, don't wish you were smarter. Don't look at someone who gets straight A's in school and think, I'm a loser because I try and try and study and I only get C's. Don't wish you were smarter. Be yourself. God created you the way you are. Everybody doesn't have to be the best. That'll destroy you. Being unthankful will destroy you. You have all kinds of problems in life if you feel inferior to other people. Be thankful for you the way you are. Be glad that you are the skin color that you are. Be glad for who God made you. Be thankful. Don't wish you were different than you are. Don't wish you were more talented. Maybe... Evelyn plays piano and sings, and you're like, oh, I wish I could be like her. Well, you can learn how. You can learn how to play piano and sing. But there are people who can't, as the saying goes, can't carry a tune in a bucket. And some people, like, no matter how hard they try, blah, 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 blah. they take, they spend a hundred dollars in music lessons, and they're just, they're worse than when, when they started. <laughs> there are people. It's not very common. I actually believe that most people can learn to sing and play. But you know what I'm trying to say. Listen, there are people that aren't talented in that way. 
Do not wish you were something that you're not. Be thankful for who you are. You will become a frustrated, angry, depressed person. I wish I could win the lottery. I wish I could do this. I wish I could have this. I wish every time you see somebody that drives by with your favorite car and you, didn't get, you don't have that car. Whatever it is, wishing you were rich, wishing you were famous, wishing you were talented, wishing... Listen, that will destroy your life. That will destroy your life. And yes... If you wish that you were a man or a woman and want to act more or look more, try to look outwardly more like a man, if you're a woman or a woman like a man, that's not being thankful. It will destroy your life. God made you. Listen, I, I, got, I got one for you. Are you ready? Don't even wish that you had different parents. All the young people say amen. amen. Don't wish you had different parents. Well, how do I know that that's wrong? Well, I could, yeah, you probably could have had better parents. I'm sure my kids could have had better parents. But you know why you should never wish you had better parents? Because the Bible says, honor thy father and thy mother. And saying, I wish you weren't my father and my mother, or thinking it, is not honoring them. God gave your parents the ability to procreate, and they made you. I know, it's shocking that God gave your parents of all people, as crazy as your parents are, he gave them the ability to procreate. And so ultimately, if you wish you had different parents, you are actually mad at God for giving you the parents that he gave you. Do not wish that you're a different gender, a different skin color, different hair color, better looking, taller, stronger, shorter, smarter. Have you ever noticed that people with dark skin try to lighten it? People with light skin try to darken it? And I get a witness. <laughs> People with, yeah? People, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, people with curly hair straighten their hair, and people with straight hair curl their hair. Isn't that crazy? And people with light hair dye it dark. People with dark hair dye it light. People who are short wear heels, get taller. Everybody's not happy with who they are. I know some of it's harmless. I'm not trying to say it's all evil, but I'm saying we've got to watch that. Be thankful for who you are. Don't wish you're better looking. Don't wish you're taller. Don't wish you were shorter. Don't wish you were smarter. Don't wish you were more talented. Don't wish you were more popular. Don't wish there were more people in your church. <laughs> don't wish there were more people in your church. Don't be envious of churches that are bigger. Don't be envious of churches that have buildings. We used to, back before our church, uh, uh, back before we had a house down here, we were renting a trailer, and uh, we were driving, we didn't, uh, our property in Minnesota hadn't sold yet, so we didn't have money to buy a house, so we are just renting. We would drive around, and we would look at houses, and then we'd go, ooh, we like that one, and I would say, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. It says it in the Bible, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. It actually says that, so. So listen, don't even wish for different parents. God made you just the way you are for a specific reason. Ask him to make you into the person he wants you to be. Then trust him to do it. Excuse me. Trust in him to do it and try to please him in all that you do. We have so many, more, so many problems in life because we're not thankful for who we are. You go back to Romans 1. Number one, be thankful for what you have. Number two, be thankful for who you are. And number three, this is so important. Be thankful in how you think. Be thankful in how you think, in the way that you think. Look at verse 28. Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Do you see how it says they started out unthankful? And then they change the natural into the unnatural. And then it says, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. When we are not thankful in the way that we think, God gives us over. He says, okay, do what you want then. He gives us that freedom to choose. But listen, but there are consequences to that freedom. And when we say, I am not thankful, and the way that we think, we don't learn how to think like a thankful person, what happens is, how you think determines how you feel. 
How you feel determines what you do. The rest of your life will be shaped by how you think. You know, there's a saying, and I believe it's true, life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you respond to it. And the way that you respond to it is based on what's in here. It's how you think. So you have to learn how to think like a thankful person. Number one, be thankful for what you have. Number two, be thankful what, for who you are. And number three, be thankful in how you think. The rest of your life will be shaped by how you think. All of the problems in society come from not being thankful. So learn to think like a thankful person. Learn to say, I am going to be thankful for the good things that I have in my life. I am going to be thankful even for the difficult things. I know God has a purpose. He's trying to teach me something. I am going to learn how to think like a thankful person. Be thankful in how you think. And the rest of these lists of sins is because they had a reprobate mind, which was a mind that was out of control, and that out of control mind where they could not resist sin, and they just go full on into sin, and here is all the wicked things that happen in society, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing, the, uh, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit some things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. All of that comes from the way that we think. Be thankful in how you think. Think thankful thoughts. Count your blessings. Focus on the good things that God has done in your life. Now listen, I remember years ago as a pastor, um, you know, as a pastor, there's all different kinds of people in your church. And I want you to turn to Philippians 4. And um, Philippians chapter 4. And uh, I remember, you know, there would be people who would be struggling and they're having a problem in their marriage, or they're having a problem with their job, or they're having a problem with their children, or they're having a problem with depression. You know, I mean, as a pastor, I visit people who attempted suicide in the hospital, and they're having a problem with all different things. And all those people, I'm thinking about them, praying for them, visiting them, talking to them, spending all my time. And one day I said to myself, well, what about the people who aren't calling me? What about the people who aren't visiting me? What about the people who aren't struggling? If all I do is focus in my mind on the negative in the church, I'm going to be struggling and depressed and wonder, why am I even doing this? You know, what's going on? And I, I realized I need to think about the, the, the good things, the people who say, thank you, that message really helped me, the people that are doing well, the people who are putting it into practice. Think thankful thoughts, count your blessings, focus on the good things God has done in your life. Ephesians 4, 6 through 8. Be careful for nothing. That's talking about the way we think, thinking thoughts full of care. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God. Be, be thankful um, in the way that you think. With thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And look at verse 8. Be thankful in the way that you think. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Listen to this. Don't think about what you are unhappy about. We all have things we're not happy about. Maybe you look at your bank account and you're not happy. Maybe you look at your broken down car and you're not happy. Maybe you look at your clothes closet and you're not happy. Maybe you look at your talent, or maybe you look in the mirror and you're not happy, okay? <laughs> we all have things that we're not happy about. Don't think about what you're unhappy about. Don't focus on how people, other people let you down. Don't think about things you wish you could do but can't. Don't envy other people and wish that you had what they had. Be thankful for every breath you take, good health, your children, your parents, all the other things God has blessed you with. There's so much to be thankful for. At the root of all sin is unthankfulness. When Lucifer was in heaven, he wasn't thankful for what he had. 
He wanted to be like God. You know, all the problems in the world today comes from what? From the devil in heaven saying, I will be like the Most High. He wasn't thankful. He was the top angel in heaven. He was the anointed cherub, the Bible says. And he wasn't thankful. And all the problems in the world today comes from that. The devil decided he wasn't thankful. Oh, but before we blame the devil too much, what about Adam and Eve? In the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve had everything they could possibly want. But they were not thankful. You know, Eve could have said, well, I'm thankful. I have thousands of trees to eat fruit from. I don't need that tree. But she said, that's the one I can't have. I want it. They were not thankful. They ate from the one tree they were told not to eat from. David was not thankful for the wives he already had. He already had seven wives. Now oh, i got to make it. Seven is not the number of completion. Eight is better. Eight's the number of new beginnings. I'm kidding. David was not thankful for the wives he had. He sinned with Bathsheba. Listen, even this, Judas was not thankful for the money that he had. So he betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Every sin you and I commit, I sin, you sin, we all sin. Every sin you and I commit is a result of not being thankful. Now listen to this. Heaven is a place where we will be thankful throughout eternity. Did you know that? Heaven is a place of thankfulness. Revelation 7, 11 and 12. All the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. You know, whenever I go to Atlanta, there's a church I visit. Anybody know? Joe Brother Joe Arthur's church, Harvest Baptist Tabernacle. He's my favorite preacher. I always go to his church. And, and something I noticed when I, the very first time I went to that church, I just said, the atmosphere in this church is so different. Now listen, I know that church has problems. I bet there's a website somewhere that will tell me about all those churches' problems. I know they're not perfect. But the atmosphere in that church is so different. And I always ask myself, I, would, I always come back, I go, how can we change some things we're doing in this church? I always think that when I go to that church. I always say, if I lived in, if I lived within two hours of that church, I would drive two hours every Sunday to go to that church. And I'm not, I'm not putting on pedal soul, they're so amazing. I know they got problems. I'm sure if I went there long enough, I would find out lots of things I disagreed with or didn't like about that church. But listen, I thought about that. What is so different about the atmosphere in the church? My, 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 my family's been in that church too. There's, a, there's an atmosphere that's different about that church. Really, I feel like when I'm there, I feel like I'm like, it's like, this is what, there's a little taste of what heaven's going to be like. And I'm not just saying that's the only church, and I'm not saying we haven't had that atmosphere at times here as well. But you know, I talk about that, and I realized this morning, I, I thought about that, I was thinking about this message, and I realized there's an atmosphere of thanksgiving. There was um, a man who was told, if you're in Atlanta, you need to go to Harvest Baptist Tabernacle. That's, that's a great church. You'll love it. You go there. And so this man came, and he told Joe Arthur at the beginning of the service, he said, well, I have a friend who told me I needed to visit this church because this was a great church. So I'm here to see what's so great about this church, why I should visit it. And he sat there during the whole service, all the singing, everything, and his message and everything, and it was all done. And he walked up to him after the service, shook his hand to leave, and he said, well, I don't see what's so great about this church. The only thing, Brother Joe, the only thing I got out of this whole service is Jesus is wonderful. And he walked out. And Brother Joe told that story, and he said, I'll take it. I'll take it. You know why that person didn't think it was that great? To go to a church that thought Jesus was wonderful because he wasn't thankful. He wasn't thankful. He took his salvation for granted. He took the Bible for granted. He took it all for granted. But I hope at this church we never get tired of being a Christian. We never get used to our salvation. And I hope that we could be that way. We could come to church every week and say, Jesus is wonderful. Because listen, in heaven they worship God and they thank him. And if we bring that atmosphere of thanksgiving here, do you know what we will be saying every week? Jesus is wonderful. Listen, I know have, this earth is not like heaven. But when we are thankful, listen, 
we are bringing a little bit of heaven to earth. When Solomon dedicated the temple, he brought all the musicians and the singers in, thousands of musical instruments and thousands of singers. And they all sang, and the Bible says, and they gave thanks to the Lord. And the Bible says that the glory of the Lord came down in a cloud while they were praising and thanking God and went into the temple. And the whole temple was full of this cloud that was bright. The priests could not go into the temple to minister because the cloud was there because they were praising God. Now listen to this. Church should be a place where when we come here, it's like there's a spiritual cloud. We don't see that person that irritates us. We don't even see that pastor that never knows when to stop. We don't see the congregation that's getting restless or sleeping or whatever. We don't see each other. We don't hear that wrong note or that mistake or all those things that bother us. We just see the glory of God. Because they were thankful. God's presence came down. Listen, I believe with all my heart that if Dells Baptist Church is a place that when we come here, we are all thankful. I believe the Holy Spirit's presence will be here. And I believe that people who visit our church, they will feel something different. They'll say, I like that. I want to go back. I feel better when I'm there. I feel closer to God. Not because of the preaching. Not because of the singing. Not because of how good looking we all are, even though we are, I think, pretty good looking. Not that. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. kidding. But because we're thankful. And when people are thankful, heaven comes to earth when we're thankful. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we ask for forgiveness. Father, I ask for forgiveness. I am not always thankful. I wish that I was thankful all the time. But Father, I pray that we would learn how to be thankful for what we have. Be thankful for who we are. And be thankful in the way that we think. Forgive us, Father, for not being thankful. Teach us to be thankful all the time. Because I know that if we are thankful and we continue to be thankful, and in everything give thanks from today to the day that we die, I know that we'll walk closely with you. I know that we won't wander away from you. And I know, Father, that your Holy Spirit will come and dwell here. There will be a cloud of glory in this place. And lives will be changed. I thank you, Father for all that you do. And I pray that you would teach us and remind us to be thankful in Jesus' name. Amen.